Hey, what's up? This is Mike. I wanted to do a review on the new in dash that I recently purchased. It's a Pioneer Z140, and I wanted to give you guys a personal review, not a professional review or you know a biased review. I wanted to give you a real person review on how I think this product is. So let's turn it on and see. I'll tell you a couple things I like about the unit and a couple things I didn't like about the unit. I notice when you're starting it up, the start off the startup time is really slow. I mean I don't know, it just seems quite slow for the amount of money it costs. The screen is really, you know, bright in the at night, but in the daytime, it can get a bit dim, I and there is no brightness settings. You get one choice of brightness. It's the same level all the time. Okay, so the really cool thing is it has a pretty good navigation in it. I mean, it's decent. You know, nothing fancy. I kind of wish... You know, I kind of wished it was a little bit more than it is. I thought it would be a little bit more when I bought it and I seen the advertising pictures online. I thought it would be like, you know, super fancy GPS, but nope, not really. Um, the thing that I would say is really going for this unit, the reason why I bought it over anything else was for the sound quality. The sound, you know, this is more of a, somebody who wants a higher quality music, you know, sound, it would buy this unit. It doesn't have any standout features. I would say its main standout feature is the quality of music that it can produce and all the different settings it has for you know the music. The screen, the touch screen's okay. I mean, you know, having an iPad and everything is nothing nowhere near the quality of an iPad touch. You know, it's kind of it's okay. A lot of repetitive screens, I, I'm really getting annoyed with that. There's lots of screens you have to okay, and this and that, you know. But there's basically every option you could imagine to adjust your sound. From the fade and balance, pretty good, I like that. The EQ, you know, it's okay. I mean, there's a lot of ways to customize it. It can sound really sweet when you play with it. I don't like any of the natural presets. Or the presets that came with it, it just doesn't, to me, none of them sound good. I, you know, you have to go custom and, you know, play with it however you like it. I like the, you could, you know, you could turn the loudness and different variations. The subwoofer, I really like this menu. I, I know I can turn it off completely. Um, you know, normal and reverse. I have that negative 24 right now because sometimes, you know, too much bass. Um... To be you know annoying at times. I mean, I really do like bass. I have subwoofers, obviously, but you know sometimes I when I'm driving home from work, I like to, it just to be mellow. So I'm glad that you can really tune the bass. I mean, really down and really up. So that's really cool. I like the way you can set the frequency on here. You know, you can go all the way down to 50 hertz, which is pretty low. Um, I, I set it right about 63 hertz. I thought that was really good for the bass. And then I set my high pass filter at 125 hertz. That makes it sound really good. And you could turn up the level, the amp level and stuff. What's I like? Bass boost. Mm. It's, you know, it's not. I don't really know about that. It's not the greatest. I don't really care for it. And then you could set up, you know, how you're listening to your speakers in here. The, you know. It's hard to say. I have a really kind of a mixed review. I like it because I bought it, but then I kind of question the amount of money it cost. Because, I mean, I'm really thinking for the amount of money, there has to be better things out there. Because I've seen these advertised for $1,500 at, at Car Toys. I paid 700 for this one. And it's quite a bit of money. I mean, it doesn't do, you know, it's not super fancy as I thought it would be. I mean... Honestly, for the price, I thought there could be better. 
out there for that that amount of money. Um, they recently came out with uh, Pioneer came out with the new one, a multimedia one, and the screen is super clear. And I mean, I kind of envy it because this one kind of just looks, you know, at times it kind of just looks old. Um, it has, this is a video here. I like I can control it all from my, you know, I have a de of the con controls for the steering wheel put in, and I had it bypassed, you know. And this has a the really cool thing about this is it has a memory card you can insert in here. That's how I'm playing these songs through a memory card. I liked that feature. Um. The thing, uh, another thing I don't like about it is the Bluetooth. It is really cumbersome. It's really slow. I mean, the boot up is slower than my factory radio. When I had my factory radio in here, I could instantly connect to my phone. It seemed like way faster. This one is really slow, and you have to go through a long process just to register your uh, your Bluetooth. And it's just crazy. Um. And the, they have a feature on here with hands-free recognition. That thing is totally useless. I mean, I've tried using it, and it can't pick up anything. I mean, my the one that I had, my factory, the one that came in my car originally, had a better one. So, like I said, you know, I would give this product a 3.5 out of 5. You know, I think it's good for... The main reason why I bought it was for sound quality. And... You know, it excels in that category. That's the one category that it excels in. Um, but, you know, I still think it's lacking. I mean, for the price, it's just kind of lacking. Um, so if you're just, if your main objective is just sound, go for it. If your main objective is features, I'll say go. There's other ones out there that could probably, you know, like a Sony has like, you know, better looking screen and the Kenwood, they have, you know, better other features, but I think this one is the king of the sound quality. So that's my review on the Pioneer Z140. Thanks for watching.